What are my motives and what is the extent of my study in relation to the Colts? Welcome to an edition of the Q&A version of Sharing Jesus with the Colts. We are people of the free gift and we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoy videos related to cults and how to share the gospel with them, then click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. Let's go ahead and jump right in. This question came from Facebook from Morgan Smith. You're obviously pandering to people who don't believe in the LDS Church already under the disguise of attempting to deconvert those of the LDS faith. It seems you've done some light reading on the subject and apparently need to do some more reading. Many of us have spent literally our lifetime studying the LDS Church in varying degrees of faith and it's painfully apparent that you're out of your depth. I would suggest going into a study of Mormonism slash Joseph Smith with an open mind, reading both negative and positive biographies, studying the doctrines themselves, and then attempting to come up with original content that isn't regurgitated from the three Wikipedia sources and two books you've read. I'm not even a fan of Joseph Smith and disagree with much of what you've discussed. Wow. So, uh, she is not a fan of Joseph Smith, or and she cl claims to have studied Mormonism her entire life. So let me just jump into this right now, and then I can fill in the gaps with other comments that have been made. Uh, my journey with this started when I was a teenager. My best friend growing up, actually, he was my best friend all the way from since fourth grade. Uh, he was Mormon. He was LDS, and uh, his family is as well, and still is I, to my. Uh, understanding, but he is not. Um, through the grace of God, um, I learned a little bit, and at that time I would say I knew hardly anything about Mormonism, and um, it was a video that I had watched, and I decided I need to talk to my friend, and through the grace of God, and uh, lots of different conversations, he ended up coming out of the LDS Church and into a relationship with Jesus. And it was at that time that God really got a hold of my mind first, honestly. I was just curious. It was very interesting to me about Mormonism. And so uh, now I had a friend who showed me where the Mormon bookstores were, and I started really diving in. I went to uh, and Enzyme or Deseret Bookstore, that one was called, and um, we got copies of Mormon Doctrine by Bruce McConkie, and we basically devoured the thing uh, because we un wanted to understand, and of course that links you to all the scriptures in the Bible, it links you to all the scriptures in the Doctrine and Covenants and uh, Book of Mormon, Pearl of Great Price, as well as lots of other sources that it points you to um, that are primary sources, they're Mormon sources that teach these very things. And of course, then you encounter LDS.org. I've had talks with countless Mormon missionaries over the years, as well as many Mormon friends. If you were to go to my Facebook page, uh, my personal one, and you were to look on my friends list, you would find a lot of either current or return Mormon missionaries on there. I am not anti-Mormon in any way, stretch of the imagination, but I do believe that Mormonism as a system does not teach the core foundational teachings of Jesus Christ. And I would invite anybody who is out there who is a Mormon into a discussion, an, an open, honest, you know, non-confrontational discussion about what did Jesus teach and who is Jesus as a person and in, in his identity. And through that, I, I think at the very least you would find that, as there, another comment later on, you know, that we don't have a lot in common. Sure, in terms of morality, we have a lot in common. In terms of our stance and a lot of cultural issues, we probably have a lot in common. But when it comes to our beliefs about Jesus, and our beliefs about the Bible, our beliefs about God, our beliefs about salvation, our beliefs about any of the core fundamental beliefs that have made Christians Christian, and what the Bible more importantly defines as what makes a Christian Christian, uh, we would have a lot of disagreement on that. And so uh, pressing forward, I became, you know, a college pastor, youth pastor, associate pastor, senior pastor of various churches. And all throughout that time, I continued to have Mormon friends. I continued to meet with Mormon missionaries. I continued to devour Mormon sources and non-Mormon sources in learning about these things. And 
I don't know how long you have been in the church or curious about the church or whatever, but you know, this is approaching, oh, it's over 20 years that I've been doing this. And I teach the class Understanding the Cults at Bethel Seminary for San Diego. And so, uh, and I wrote the book Sharing Jesus with the Cults. And you can just look at it and you can see all of the different sources that I've quoted and cited. And they're primary sources. They're not Wikipedia sources, okay? Um, I try as best as I can to go to the source. I try as best as I can when I'm having a, a conversation with an individual to not assume what they believe. But instead, I try to understand understand through questions that I in dialogue what it is that they believe so if you feel like there's things that I have been saying that you disagree with then why not just bring those up you know that I'm doing these question and answer videos and that I'm approaching this from a standpoint of trying to have a dialogue and so why not bring those up instead of just attacking my character and assuming false things, which are clearly, by this point, I hope you understand that they are false things. We spent uh, two years in, in Utah as missionaries, and that uh, answers a response that I, I got from somebody. It seems like I have Utah roots. Um, but just going on, you know, I have read about Joseph Smith. I've read about Mormonism. I've read about all these things. And so now it's time for you to step up to the plate and tell me what is it that I have said specifically that is incorrect because I've shown over time that when I am incorrect about something, I'm willing to admit it and I'm willing to admit it publicly on a very public forum like this on YouTube and even um, possibly editing my book. If that's what it comes to, I'm willing to do it and I actually did do it within the first two weeks of its release. Uh, because of things that came to my attention. So, now the ball's in your court. So, Brian Wright, also from Facebook. Jason, if you're truly willing to engage in a meaningful discussion, I think you'll find many in this group more than willing to talk to you and discuss what Mormons believe. I think you may find, after an honest search, that we have more in common than you think, including the belief that salvation comes in and through Jesus Christ, not Joseph Smith, despite viewing him as a prophet, not always openly acknowledging his very human faults. And I have to say that um, you're trying to put spin on what I had said, okay? I am not saying that you believe that Joseph Smith is your savior. I know that you believe Jesus is the savior, um, but you cannot separate Joseph Smith from Jesus even according to my most recent conversation with the two Mormon missionaries who are in my own town of Roundup, Montana. And I asked them very pointedly if somebody believes everything that Jesus says. And they have absolutely no problem. They place their entire faith in what Jesus did and said. But they have zero faith in what Joseph Smith said. Can they go to the celestial kingdom? And the answer was no. You, that Jesus and Joseph are completely inseparable was their words. And so, in a way, yes, I know that you believe that salvation by grace means that because Jesus died and rose again from the dead, that everybody's going to be resurrected and everybody's going to go to a level of heaven. But that's not heaven from a Christian point of view. And so, uh, to say salvation or eternal life, more specifically, in a Mormon terminology, and I don't know if this is what you believe, but Mormon terminology, eternal life means going to the celestial kingdom and dwelling with God in Jesus Christ. And that's exactly how a Christian would define heaven. So in a Mormon terminology standpoint, the only thing that a Christian would view as heaven would be the celestial kingdom. And it is very clear that you cannot get to the celestial kingdom by just believing that Jesus died for your sins and rose again from the dead. But instead, you have to go through the temple and you have to do a lot of temple work. You have to fulfill your callings. You have to keep your covenants. You have to completely repent of your sins and forsake them. And uh, that's quoting, you know, Spencer Kimball, Miracle Forgiveness. And so, again, if you don't think that I know what Mormons are saying and teaching, I, I bet you I've gone to the Mormon website more than a lot of you have, okay? So, 
Going on, I see you've written a book on sharing the the gospel with the Colts. May I suggest that if your aim is to truly help others come into Christ, insulting them right off the bat by calling them a cult and then completely misrepresenting their beliefs or practices, no Mormons do not celebrate Joseph's birthday and they love Christmas, it's not going to help. Well, yes, they do celebrate Christmas. And I wasn't trying to say that they don't celebrate Christmas. And I wasn't necessarily trying to say that you celebrate Christmas. Joseph's birthday, like that it's a, a, a separate holiday on the Mormon calendar, but everybody knows when Bert Joseph's birthday is within the Mormon church. And the way that it is celebrated and talked about and all of those things um, within Mormon circles, sometimes it can become more prominent or more important than Christmas, December 25th. And so I, that's all I was trying to say. I'm not trying to misrepresent you. And so if I, I hope I clarified that. Like I said, I'm open to acknowledging when I make a mistake or when I overstate something. And so I noticed that you, you pointed to that as like that's misrepresenting your beliefs. That's not a belief. Um, that has nothing to do with the belief. Um, that has to do with the practice. And so it does, doesn't change anything that you guys believe about Jesus or Joseph Smith. And we're still not on the same page on either of those two things. So these tactics may work to keep your Baptist congregation from listening to the Mormon missionaries when they come knocking, but this is not an effective means to get Mormons to listen to you. I sincerely wish you the best in your ministry and our shared quest to come unto Christ. I, I doubt that you wish me the best in my ministry because quite honestly, uh, my ministry, at least this aspect of my ministry, is focused on telling people the truth about Mormonism, which obviously you don't agree with, and the, the truth about Christianity. And so the other thing I need to clarify here is that if you were to ask the people in my church, how often do I talk openly about Mormons? They would say, not really at all. I mean, I yes, it, there's questions that come up and I will answer them. But if I am addressing something that's from the scripture and I teach from the scripture verse by verse in my church, I don't just sit there bashing other religions on Sunday morning, okay? Uh, you need to understand that if I'm doing that in my church, I will say there are some groups that refer to themselves as Christian who believe this or that. And if those of the people in my congregation who are in the know about those things, then they're in the know about those things. Um, And a lot of them aren't, and they have no idea what I'm talking about, but the point is made all the same. I'm not going out of my way. Um, The closest that it's come is we are doing a study on my book um, on Wednesday nights in my church and my study and our study. And so I'm doing it completely based off of questions. I'm not even teaching through the content of the book. So when people ask questions, and if a Mormon were to want to come to that, I would be more than welcome to, to have them come to that. Or to Jehovah's Witness, Christian Science, anybody can come to our church, come to our studies, and ask any question they want. And that's another distinctive between our groups, because that's not true when it comes to your church. You are not encouraged to ask questions. And so the fact that you have somebody out here like myself or anybody else who is talking openly about things that you believe and whether you agree with me or not, that in and of itself you believe is wrong. But I need to remind you of this, that Joseph Smith himself in the first vision account says that he believed that God and Jesus told him directly that all churches are an abomination. He shouldn't join any of them. Their creeds are corrupt and they their hearts are far from them. Okay. So going on to the next one, it, Billy Allen on Facebook. It is unfortunate that many come here to bash us about things they do not understand. They call themselves Christians, but they do not confess Jesus Christ. Wow. I, I you know, th- that is such a an arrogant statement because I would not even say that about a Mormon, that you do not confess Jesus Christ. I know that your church is called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I know that you guys believe that you are a Christian. And I know that you believe that with all your heart and that you're following Christ. I know you believe that. And so I would not dare to say that you do not confess Jesus Christ. 
And again, this is an attack on my character. It's not a question in regards to something that I have teaching. And in regards to coming to bash you, that particular post that I made, I did include a link to my video that I made about the claims. Mormon, all Mormon claims about Joseph Smith. And yet the, the question that I asked in the post was, what are your beliefs, your comments, and your questions about Joseph Smith? In what sense is that bashing you? And then when I left you guys to just have a conversation and just put your thoughts and put your post, then the people started commenting on how I was kind of absentee and that I just posted and ran and, you know, I do have ding dong ditch, you know, things that, you know, that I do. And that's not what I did. In fact, what happened was that I made the post. I was trying to get uh, people's thoughts in regards to Joseph Smith, look for some other topics that I might want to explore, um, look for possible conversations that I might be able to have. And then I also had incredibly busyness, you know, thrust upon me for about two, three weeks at my church. And I didn't have time for YouTube or Facebook and all those things. And so when I came back to it, then I find that if I don't comment, then I just hit and ran. And if I do comment, then you call me bashing. So I don't know which one it is that I think preferably you would just want me to just go away. But you're the one who also is in groups that are called on Facebook Christians and Mormons discussing, you know, and they have a lot of different titles on it. So I don't know what it is that you're expecting the Christians to do if when we come to discuss these things, you just turn around and bash us. And, or, and I, I guess I'll say it that way. You want to say it? I'm going to say it the same way too. You, you accuse me of bashing you because I asked an honest question that wasn't even a leading question that I posted a video that just gave Mormon sources. That's it. No anti-Mormon, no ex-Mormon, no anything. Sources. And you called me bashing. Then that, that was the reason why I came to your site, is to that Facebook page, was to bash you. So if there's an insight or a question that you have that I did not cover here, then put that in the comments down below. And I'll be gathering some of those for the next week's Q&A videos. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Let, give us a thumbs up if you like the content for today and share this video with others who want to reach out to cults with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.